Welcome back to Sip the Tatter Films, and I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're coming at you with another draft prospect. Today's draft prospect is Kadarius Tony, the versatile, the do-it-all guy from the University of Florida that a lot of people are clamoring about and talking about his skill set and what he can do once he gets to, in a, well, get in the right NFL system. But um, I think you're in for a treat with this one today, and uh, let's go ahead and cue the intro. <laughs> Before we get into it, if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And once you do that, hit the bell notification so you can be notified when I drop these random videos. Um, but Kadarius Tony, let's get into the film and and you know just just dive right into it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. All right, this is Tony here with the high socks. Right here with the high socks. Let me see if I can highlight them for you. All right, so let's let's watch it and then we'll come back to it. On the scene route versus this versus LSU. Again, as it fades back, the quality like disintegrates. So, but we can, I'm gonna walk you through it. I'm gonna tell you what I like about it. So again, that's Tony right there. What I like is he has a little scene route. And the guy's already playing him outside leverage. So instead of fighting him constantly to get this leverage, he just runs right past him, then splits it. So he's gonna split the he gonna just go past him, and he's gonna try to get in that little seam right there, and the ball's gonna be put on him. So no use of just fighting with this dude trying to force this, you know, to get outside, because he's giving you a path to run. But the thing is, everybody can't do this. You gotta be fast to be able to just uh take the leverage that they're giving you and then make it work for you. He forcing, see, we want to go outside, but he's shuffling outside. So I might as well just hit it right here and get past him, then get back out here where I want to be. He said, forget it. Now he ran past, he, he in old crap mode right now. And he's where he want to be in the route at the time. So you still got the slot fade. You just had to go inside. And he hit it. And he hit it. Everybody can't do that. You got to be fast and shifty to, to, you know, to first of all be defeated up here and then come back. And he's fast enough, he's shifted enough to do that. Outside left, she's jumping outside, jumping outside. I'm just taking inside and I'm gonna steal a fade on him. Cause I ran right past him. The safety not there. He went outside because he had safety help, but he also let him widen out. Once he once he went inside, he allowed Tony to widen out and then put the safety in no man's lane. Speed to do that for you though. Speed and quickness. Let's go to play two. Play two, Tony is here with the high socks again. Right there. The subtleness, just to, let me let it play. The subtleness of that. He goes up and doesn't get it, but just, just watch the route. He don't catch this, but just watch how he gets inside of these guys, how he splits them. So they're trying to bracket him. They're trying to double team him. They're trying to double team him. Trying to double team it with this guy on the inside, this guy over the top. So their thinking process is he's not running that route in there. That's their thinking process. He's inside, he's over top. They're giving you the like some kind of little out route, like a, a 10 yard out or a corner. You're not going to get in here. Okay, so we all know he gets in here. Coming off, they bragging, look at him. Both of them double team. So he basically hits like a Euro step and freezes Freezes this guy on that step inside. So now he's still over top trying to, you know, play what he's supposed to play. But they left that gap because of him freezing that guy with that Euro step. Now he splits him. He splits him. And now he's past both of them. He's open now. He's open. He was allowed to recover a little bit. You know, it was a contested pass. But the fact that he beat the double like that. A little dead leg. Boop boop. And never broke never uh broke speed. Never broke speed. Watch it. Doop doop. And then split him. All he had to do was freeze and get number four flat footed. I think th this is number four, I think. Just freeze him and get him flat footed, and then he split him. With that inside move, he had to he had to plant both of his feet on the ground 
just to take away that cut inside if he was gonna do it. And when he didn't do it, he went right through. It. Went right through him. And that was bars, wasn't it? Just subtle stuff right like that is, is why I really like this dude. Play three. Use him as a decoy. Use him as a decoy. So this is Tony in the backfield right here. Let me go to the beginning of the play. This is this is Tony right here in the backfield. This is the running back coming in jet motion. So you're faking like you're going to toss it to Tony going here. Just give the jet to the running back going that way. And this dude right here is a absolute monster. You know, I, I always tell stories about guys I coached against in high school, and Damon Pierce is one of them. And um, we played him his senior year, and he had probably about 40 yards rushing at halftime, maybe. At half, maybe 40 yards rushing at halftime, and he finished with almost 300. He got ugly in the second half. All right, but use him as a decoy because he can do so much. All right, play four. Tony right here. They're going empty. Let's see what they get. Mmm. Good route. Good hands. Gets to the top of the route and give him a little pap uh, pap and breaks inside. Now let's think about this on a on a um, NFL level. And again, this dude is trying to take away inside. This dude is playing him over the top. So the rest of Florida's offense is now playing. 10 on 9 because two dudes are trying to defend Tony. You look at it. These two dudes defended Tony. He got him. He got him. He got that. He got that. And so he's just kind of trying to rover and play, you know, whatever happens. Look at it. He trying to he don't want to let him inside. He's turned inside. So he set him up with his with his quickness, gonna give him a good move right at the top of this route. Pause him, hesitate, stick that foot in the ground and come flat. Got him to open up. Now, he's where he want to be. As a receiver, he's where he want to be. Defender, you don't want him in there. He didn't cross your face. So he beat that defender. He beat this guy. And then this dude's not a factor because he's running a little shallow route. Watch the catch. Low and away. Right there, all hands. That's all hands. All hands away from him. And, uh, you know, attempt to get some uh, yards out the catch. But that, that's a great route. The dude is inside leverage on you, has his butt cocked to the inside, and allows you to get inside. I got that on here? Let's see if I got that. So look at look look at down here in this corner. Look how he's cocked. He's don't want you to get inside. And Tony gets inside. Look at the look at that. Hands. Ball away from the body. Hands. Nothing wrong with that. Number five, play five. Tony is here. It's a bad circle job, but y'all get the drift. Mm. Let's start at the top of the route. Now, this is the negative I don't like about it. This is one of the negatives on here. This is one of the negatives. Yeah, he started and tried to move, do, you know, give him a move with his with your feet. But at some point in time, you got to be physical with your hands. You can't just let this dude ride you like that. That's a good job of riding him by the DB. Even though it might be holding, you got to use your arms and your hands to get them off of you. It's not all feet all the time. Quickness quickness is great. Good footwork is great. But at some point, you got to be violent with your hands to get them up off of you. Because say if this was an end route, if he got them hands off of him, but with as, as heavy or as hard as he's trying to hold him and he stick him and go that way, he'd be wide open. But your hands got to be violent. I don't like the way he let him ride him like this. Kind of took him off his route. Took him out of the route, rather. All right, next play. Play six. Tony is, where's Tony? Coming in motion. To the backfield. A running play. Regular, uh, inside zone, I think. Shit, might be inside zone left. Let's see. Motion him to the backfield. Yeah. Inside or outside zone? I think it's outside zone. And he sticks his foot in the ground like a running back, sees the space, slow to and explodes through, and then gets upfield. Make a man, make two people miss, keep his balance. Make three people miss. Weapon. Dude's a weapon. And play seven. He is in the backfield again. Line up in the backfield. 
run the wheel route, go up and get it. Mismatch. Mismatch. So now this dude is guarded by, I don't know if they snuck a DB in here, but this is traditionally the linebacker position. So if this is a linebacker, you're in trouble. Makes a great catch. High points the ball. Comes down with it. You know, gets another yard or two. But uh, he's a mismatch. Play eight. I don't know how many I got. This may be the last one, may not be. I don't remember how many I clipped. Tony's in the backfield again. Sim in the backfield again. Right here. Mm. That route versus a linebacker. If you catch him in man and your running back has this route versus a linebacker to the field side, it's a wrap. Just give him the ball. Give him the ball and give him a second to maybe square the guy up. Now, at this point, look at all the space he got to work with. And my finger ain't drawing it right. But look at all the space he got to work with. All he got to do is if he can make that guy miss. If he can make that guy miss, look at the space he got to run with. And he does. He makes that guy miss and gets another 15, 20 or so yards. He's a problem. He really is a problem. Next play. Oh, that was the last play. So, my ending. Let me go back to me. Just me. All right, I'm back. My ending summary of Kadarius Tony is he potentially could be a first round guy. If he falls in the hands of, you know, some people have him mocked to KC. If he falls in the hands of that team, who? But, but you know what? And with, with what happened with them in the Super Bowl, I really don't see them, you know, going after a skill guy. They really need O line help. But um, if he, he would to fall to somebody like KC, it's crazy. But he, he's fast. Uh, he runs good. He runs okay routes. But once his route run is defined with his quickness, his route's going to be off the, the roof. Uh, he's a matchup nightmare because you can put him in the backfield. You can jet sweep with him. You can toss the ball to him. You can fake to him and give it to a real running back, and so be it. Uh, the only thing about Tony is in the senior bowl, he has some amazing routes, but we dropped the ball. That's what concerns me. In the senior bowl, he had some amazing routes. So he was leaving DBs in the dust. But we dropped the ball. That 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 scares me about Tony, and that that may push him back to the second round. But he he he's a talent. He is really a talent, and I don't know how many people I'm gonna kind of clamor about you know his his skill set. But he's so versatile. And that's and NFL is the more you can do, the the more the more valuable you are. And I, I think Gurley kind of said it best. He says your best. Uh, Something is availability, but I'm going to bag up off of your best uh, ability in the NFL is versatility. If you can do multiple things, you know, they, they'll find a spot for you. Look at Pat Ricard for the Ravens. Started off as a uh, defensive lineman. Now probably one of the better fullbacks. But um, this is Coach Evans with Sip the Tally Films. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, if you want to be a part of Questions with Coach, make sure you get your emails in to sip the tally at gmail.com. And uh, until next time, i got a few more receivers to do before um, – my top nine and nine comes out, and I think my next receiver is Diamani Brown from North Carolina. I don't know if I said his first name right, but Brown from North Carolina. And I got three other guys on my board that I can't find film for. One of those guys is the kid from Purdue. That is uh, Rondell Moore, I think. But I got a couple more guys on that board, too. But definitely film with, with Brown coming soon. And then we'll, you know, I'll kind of highlight some other guys and whatnot. But if there's any receiver I should look at that I probably don't have film on, well, I can go look at their games on YouTube or a highlights on YouTube. Uh, put that receiver down there. Somebody you think that's first round, first two rounds worthy that could be in that, to break my top nine, put their name in the comment section and also send your emails to uh, siptotally at gmail.com and, you know, be a part of Questions with Coach. And this is Coach Evans from Sip the Tally Films. I'm out. Peace. We'll be right